Welcome everyone in the next session of how to design Perlment while using the R2 design. Uh, in the today's session, we will try to mainly understand and resolve the numerical solution for the, while using the uh, R2 problem. You can also subscribe to the channel for the uh, other related to Perlment design and analysis problem. In those sessions, in those lectures, I already covered the Perlment, its function, its uh, design life, how to calculate service ability, index, permanent failure mechanism, multi-elastic theory, western guard theory, and the warping stress analysis. You can also uh, subscribe to the channel for the permanent flexible as well as the rigid design tutorial. <clears throat> uh, today we will try to understand that what is the purpose of us to design. So the basic function or objective of this test of this uh, design is to determine the significant relation between the number of repetitive load of any specified axle that axle could be uh, of a different magnitudes and arrangement such as uh, tandem axle, triaxle, and diaxle, and so on. Okay. Uh, the performance of different thickness within the permanent layer is also the, the, uh, the core purpose of the Arstur design. Okay. Those are the, are the steps of the Arstur. In the today's session, we will try to resolve the numerical of the uh, flexible permanent. So the first step would be to calculate the uh, traffic while using the standard axle loading. And the second is about the soil support in resilient modulus, the supporting condition uh, to determine the supporting condition. That's very much important in the uh, at the design level because if we did not plan and design and select the material accordingly, so there may be issue with the design life or with the service life of the pavement or the roads. The third part would be to determine the standard deviation. In the fourth part, we will try to understand the pavement reliability, while in the fifth part, we will try to understand <clears throat> that how we can predict the service ability, which we usually determine with delta PSI. Uh, in the same step, we will try to understand uh, and also calculate the, the pavement service ability rating, uh, PSI in the TS as well, or ST as well, which is called the terminal service ability as well. Last step, uh, so that how we can uh, insert or merge or to design numerical. So we would like to design the flexible pavement, which we call the highway or the uh, interstate from Karachi to Peshawar, where 2.13 million of buses and 1.3 million of trucks uh, need to be facilitated, and uh, we have received the data from the from the uh, traffic department, where we have the value of CBR, we have the value of uh, P naught, PG, uh, subgrade moisture condition, and also the modulus of resilient as well, such as what is the uh, the modulus of uh, resilient of the top layer wearing course, subgrade, and subbase, and so on. We have also the reliability level, uh, and so on, okay? <clears throat> Moving on, going to the very first step uh, where we would like to understand the uh, traffic calculation. In the R2 flexible pavement method, traffic is usually considered in terms of ESAL, okay? equivalent single axle loading, for which we usually determine the terminal PSI, which we call pavement service ability index. So we have all those values, okay? But if we don't have those values, we can also use the R2 design uh, flexible chart of uh, table 20.13, which mainly uh, explain and uh, describe the structural number according to the axle loading. OK, so we must assume that the structure number of the pavement 
uh, should be according to the traffic loading condition because the higher the value of structural number, so the stronger will be the payment and which will also uh, impact of on the traffic uh, where we will have less chances of the payment deterioration. The next part is soil support, which we usually determine from the California bearing ratio and the modulus of the resilient. So the CBR and MR value are usually used to describe the subgrade material property. In the OSTO design, we have only uh, MR values, which is basically derived from the CBR. So we have the CBR in our given question. So we have the uh, formula of uh, 1500 into the CBR root test result, which were given five. So we have total of uh, modulus of resilient value is uh, 75,000 PSI. The next part we have the material of construction. So now we would like to uh, plan and uh, uh, and design for the base, sub base, and base course. So those charts are basically available and which convert the property of the pavement construction material according to the structural coefficient. So the structural coefficient we have for the structural coefficient will be uh, vary for each and every layer. So the top one will be uh, determine or uh, represent with A1, second one with A2, and third one with A3. So that value we can determine from the value of the CBR, California bearing ratio. So if we have the CBR of any area around 25, so this is only for your own understanding. So we will have the, the uh, sub-base uh, material construction would be, uh, so the, it would be 0 0.10. Structural coefficient, and similarly, we can determine it for the base course as well here. And similarly, for the uh, top surface as well, because uh, that surface will mainly receive all those loading permitted. So, if we have the uh, modulus of resilient MR, which we already determine in uh, step number two, which is seventeen. Uh, 7,500, uh, 75,000, as you can see here on the basis of MR value, so we can easily determine the value of A1, okay, here. But this is, uh, this figure is actually done for the uh, 7,500,000, so you can uh, change its value accordingly. <clears throat> The next step is about to choose the reliability. So reliability basically indicate or through reliability we determine and show the level of the pavement section that for how long that will survive. And that value we derive or determine from the standard normal distribution method. So is not is basically the standard deviation here you can see here, which is mentioned with is D, okay? And uh, that account for the variation chances in the traffic forecast and the, in the uh, chances in the variation uh, for the design period. So if we have the uh, urban level of reliability and the rural area, so its function will be uh, completely different. And the same value is again divided among the uh, on the basis of uh, reliability. So as we already know that over pavement design reliability is about 90%. So we have the ZR value as well, as you can see here, and that specific value. So in the R2 design, it's mentioned its reliability is 90. So we have the ZR value of minus 1.282. So we will select the 0.55. The next step is to determine the pavement condition. Pavement condition means <clears throat> now we would like to uh, determine the current value and the terminal 
service ability index of the payment. For that purpose, it, uh, this portion was already covered in the uh, previous session that on the basis of the field observation, we usually determine those values while starting from five till zero. OK, so we have two type of a value is you can see here we have the uh, P naught PT and Delta PSI we can easily determine. So Delta PSI is basically the value between P naught minus PT. OK, so we usually determine for the newly fresh uh, concrete or or the flexible or the rigid pavement, the P naught value of 4.5. But when after its uh, service life of two to five years, so it somehow reduced up to 1.5 to two. OK, so we typically use the for the uh, design period, we will use the 3.5. OK, so this is uh, this chart is only for the uh, explanation that after using of how many trial years. So if it's uh, 13, so we will have different P naught. If it's trial year is 9.7, so it will actually vary accordingly and uh, the corresponding performance period will also increase and decrease. And on the basis of traffic condition or terminal service ability will also change accordingly. OK. This is our structural design, so R2 is used to uh, determine the flexible pavement for the educate or the maximum uh, to design the load to carry or projected design according to the demand from the traffic count. So the same design apply to the ESL if it's greater than 50,000 for the performance period. If the if the ESL is equivalent single axle loading is less than 50, so this usually considered the low volume roads or low volume pavement. OK, as you can see here, this is our uh, typical uh, R stone model. Uh, according to that model, we have the value of ZR, which we already derived from the uh, from the uh, modulus of uh, resilient. We already had is not as well. We have the structural number. We have the delta PSI and we have the value of MR. So we can. Uh, we can uh, solve that equation. Here uh, is a bit in a more detailed form that W18 basically representing the uh, periodic number of ESL while ZR is the standard normal deviation is not is basically the combined standard deviation is not is basically structural numbers and Delta PSI is actually the difference between the initial design or the initial service ability and the terminal service ability while MR is uh, representing the modulus of resilient. So this is the the very last part. So we have the total uh, required number, for example, uh, for according to the preliminary result, if we have the value of <coughs> uh, required structural number of 2.74 with the depth of 6.5, and then of the uh, aggregate layer, if we have required of 1.13, and with the uh, with the nine inch in depth. So we can. Um, accordingly design, but keep in mind that uh, in the ASTO design, it is very much important uh, to use the, uh, uh, the 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 value from the field as well as from the observation, because if we only use the value from the field and we eliminate or uh, did not use the uh, observation in the design, then we might end with, with uh, some issues or with some problems. OK. We can also consider those assumptions as well. If uh, that actually work that what type of a sub base value we can use on the basis of a CBR if we have the initial service ability uh, index of 4.5 out of uh, 4.2 out of 5. So for the uh, terminal service ability index for the local road that might be 2.0. For the uh, collector road, we have we might have 2.3. For the arterial, we might have 2.5. And the uh, reliability factor could be determined from that ASTO uh, 
design similarly of the layer coefficient, which we call A1, A2, and A3 could also be uh, determined from here. Okay. <clears throat> Similarly, uh, the same chart could be used for the uh, flexible uh, pavement thickness, either for the local road as well as for the collector road. There will be a bit minute changes in the uh, design for the local as well as for the collector. <coughs> as you can see here, uh, all those values, for example, if we have the uh, thickness is somehow uh, about eight inches for the collector road that would be 9.5 or maybe 10. OK, <clears throat> but we can consider both of them. Thank you very much. If you have uh, any question, you can get back.